Welcome to the Prophecy Club. I've got Dr. Daniel Daves on the phone with me today, pastor for 20 years, full-time missionary for eight years, lives in Costa Rica, and God has given him two dreams. I think you'll find them very interesting. Now, Daniel, welcome back to the Prophecy Club. Thank you for having me. First, I've got a couple of questions about your first dream, which we talked about in the last broadcast. And that is, you were shown that property lines were dissolved and the dollar is worthless, correct? That's correct. In the first part of the dream, there were three announcements made by a government official, and those three announcements were, America, as you've known, it has ceased to exist. All property lines have been dissolved and the U.S. dollar is worthless. Okay, to me, that says that basically America has officially become, at that point, a communist nation. Because when you dissolve the property lines, You just made us a communist nation, and the dollar is worthless, meaning that they're going to come up with some other type of exchange. got to be somehow. This is really shaking news here. You know, the dream came in three parts, and while there are probably many ways to try to interpret the first part, the third part of that dream solidified it. As you remember, that Secret Service agent was speaking to me. I think he was an angel. But uh, he said the number one enemy of America is communism, and that was the end of the dream. He spoke it very abruptly and with a stern warning as he spoke that to me. So I believe you're right that this first announcement really is announcing to the people, or it's their wake-up call, the aha moment, where the sleeping masses wake up and realize they've just been communized. I know that so many people want to believe that, oh, this is just a little slump, this is just a little bump in the road, and that our economy is going to turn around. But if your dream is coming in the next five to seven years, or even ten years, it doesn't seem to be heading toward turning around at all. It seems to me like it's going to be going downhill from here on out. Well, I believe you're absolutely right. And I'm going to just tell you personally, I don't know that uh, this dream is for five to ten years from now. I personally look for it to happen much sooner than that. Give me your best guess. And brothers and sisters, this is just a guess. But what's your best guess? Yeah, this is just a guess because I'm not real good at, at timing things. But I do know this, that the U.S. dollar is being unpinned from the world reserve currency status as I speak right now. From February till May of 2012, 70% of the world's economy, which includes China, Russia, Japan, Saudi Arabia, many of these nations have formed alliances, they've formed different types of contracts, trade agreements, and they've all done it outside of the U.S. dollar. That is a precedent that means that the U.S. dollar as the world reserve currency is finished. If that's true, then indeed, the only thing that U.S. dollar is worth, the moment that the world wakes up and realizes that that people are not interested in trading it any longer, it's only worth the toilet paper it's written on. I believe that the nations of this world are aligning themselves right now to see the fall of the dollar, and they're getting out and getting away because they know, I believe, in an hour that thing's going to fall. I had a second dream in 2009. It was the same impact of the first dream. I was there. And when I woke up again, I was having trouble uh, identifying which reality was real. Now, in this second dream, 2009, I was diving, and I was diving with Team Obama. I believe that when you have a president in a dream, it's not necessarily talking about the man, but it's talking about the group, the team, the, the government position. And uh, just like uh, many people are looking at Obama individually, I think there's a million people behind him pushing him, and he's just the spokesman. So, But in this dream, he was leading a diving team, and I was on the team. We were very, very deep. Now, I am an open-water diver, so I understand a little bit about diving. Maybe that's why the Lord gave this dream to me in this manner. But we were deep, and we had full face masks, so we were able to communicate and talk like maybe you've seen in the movies before. But President Obama was giving orders and commands, and there were officials around him, and we were all diving, and we dove into this big mouth cave. We were very deep. And if you're an open water diver, that's it means open water, which means above you, you can get up to the surface if you ever need to in emergency. 
And when we went into this cave, there was a great sense of danger. I was very uncomfortable with all that rock up overhead of me, knowing that I could not get to the surface if there was an emergency. Now, we were in this cave, and we looked at the end of it. There were multiple tunnels going out in different ways. And President Obama was leading, and he was telling people, we're going into this dark cave over here. This is the way. Let's go. And I felt like I need to get away from this team now. I was ready to separate myself from the team. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, came a mighty earthquake. Everything started shaking, and huge, multiple tonned boulders came down and shut off the mouth of that cave. And I suddenly realized, as all of us were there, we realized we were trapped and we were not getting out alive. And that was the end of the dream. I woke up. What do you think it means? Now, as you know, I live in Costa Rica, so whether I'm, if I'm traveling in the U.S., if I'm in the U.S., when things happen, I'm part of it. But otherwise, I'm on the outside of Costa Rica. So I'm looking at the stream saying, now, Lord, I was there with this team. I sensed I needed to separate from the team because they were going the wrong way. But I was caught in this earthquake and this tragedy. So I don't know, honestly, if this means that Daniel Dave, that because I'm a U.S. citizen, that I was caught in this and unable to get out, or if I was just representative of people who were following Team Obama and who came to their demise because they followed him into the cave and into the dark chasms. Well, think that, let, let me just give you my take on it. I mean, it's probably both. In other words, you'll probably literally be in it. And it's also a picture of the entire church in it. In other words, all of America. I think what it's saying is that America is heading financially. And, you know, with the property and everything, just basically our whole world is heading into a deep, dark tunnel that we are not going to get out of, that God is going to cause an earthquake. And that fits in with other things that we've got, too. I'll talk about that in a second. But remember, Jeremiah 51, verse 9 says, We would have healed Babylon, meaning America, but she would not be healed. Forsake her and let every man go into his own country. So, as you've heard it said, that when America gets sick, the rest of the world has pneumonia. So, when America gets sick and the dollar dies, the property lines are removed, I can see that the rest of the world is going into a financial, deep, dark, bad tunnel. I believe so. And... Along that line, I have considered as well that that the fact that we were down deep underwater, there's a simple term, when you are underwater in something financially, you're in debt. And I believe this might be part of the dream that our nation is so far in debt and bankrupt, and instead of our leaders trying to lead us back up to the surface where there's safety, our leaders were leading us sideways into a cave. So the leadership is leading incorrectly. They're, they're not leading us back up out of debt to shallow waters. They're leading us straight into a cave and into dangerous territory. I interviewed Terry Hale, and he had a dream in which he was shown that, just without getting into all the details, that Obama is going to be the next president, and he will be the final president. So that sort of fits with your timing, seeing that this dream, these two dreams, really may not be too far down the line before they are coming to pass. It sure could be. And as, as we know that, uh, you know, this ne- next election, as I've heard so many say, it, it may be the last election if we get to this election. But if that's the case, then uh, uh, Obama has four years left, and it could be, as you said, the last election. Absolutely. Well, if Obama gets in, and, and I believe he will, then he also signed an executive order here about 90 days ago that gives him the power now to declare a martial law in a time of peace. Okay, so he gets in, there's four more years, and then he declares martial law. And I understand that when martial law is declared, that administration has the authority to stay in power for up to five years. Okay, so right there is nine more years that he could stay in office. Wow. I was not aware of that, but it sure makes sense to me. Okay, Daniel, why don't you go back and give us your first dream in its entirety, and I want to tie both of these dreams together. Uh, The first dream in 2008, 
about four in the morning, I entered into a three-part dream, which was very, very real to me. I was there. It was so real that I, I personally know it was from the Lord. So I was in Dallas, Texas, downtown, in scene number one of this dream, and uh, there were multitudes of people, which make me think that we're talking about the whole nation here, multitudes of people who were standing around just silently waiting it was like we were waiting for an announcement. Now, I was with a friend. My son and his son were together playing off to the side. And I believe that means that this thing, whatever it is, is going to affect our next generation. And while I was there, there were big screens up on all of the buildings around, huge big screens, and we were waiting for an announcement. Suddenly, a government official appears on the screens, and he gets behind a podium, and he says, Ladies and gentlemen, I have an announcement to make. Now, it was at that time he began to make a three-part announcement. I believe every person needs to write this down, and you need to meditate on it and find out what it means to you. The three-part announcement was this. He said, America, as you have known it, has ceased to exist. All property lines have been dissolved, and... The U.S. dollar is worthless. When he spoke those three statements, the people woke up, and they began to be frantic. I was very concerned suddenly for the people as they all began to run frantically, running to their cars, running to the buses. They were all running, and they started driving west, which was very significant because it was made clear to me that these people were heading west. One man jumped in a car, he took off so fast, he was heading straight for my son and my friend's son, and I had to run over and I grabbed them by the collars and yanked them out of the way of his... We'll be right back after this message. I just made the revised Revelation verse by verse 2.0. The first DVD was me teaching Revelation with my finger in the Bible. The new 2.0 version has 612 PowerPoint slides, 212 pictures, and 10 charts. The topics are, what is the message of the seven churches? Who are the four horsemen? Is Revelation layered or sequential? What is a probable time for the tribulation to begin? Who are the beasts from the sea, the earth, and the pit? What does is fallen, is fallen mean? What does it look like the day Jesus returns? Is the day of the Lord a year, a month, or a 24-hour day? Who is the woman who rides the beast? Who is the false prophet? Does the New Jerusalem come down at the end of 6,000 years or 7,000 years? When do we get our mansions? Are there one or two judgments on America? When is the door shut to the five virgins? Does everyone who survives Armageddon automatically get a glorified body? Two-thirds of mankind is killed in the tribulation. What happens to the other one-third? Eight hours, four DVDs, Valued at $120, the upgrade gift amount is $30, the full version $75. Call 785-266-1112. Ask for 2.0, that's Revelation verse by verse, second version, 2.0. Call 785-266-1112 or go to prophecyclub.com. Revelation verse by verse, 2.0. The Prophecy Club is having a summer blowout. You get six DVDs of your choice valued at $180 for a gift of $100, but it expires August 31st. Not available on the internet. You got to call 785-266-1112 to place your order. That's six Prophecy Club DVDs for a gift of $100. Call 785-266-1112. Get yourself informed. Don't let the tricks of the devil deceive you. Get six DVDs for a gift of $100. Call 785-266-1112. And now, back to the program. And I had to run over and I grabbed them by the collars and yanked them out of the way of his speeding car or he would have hit them and damaged or killed them. And I, I believe that has to mean that this next thing that's coming, when the people wake up, they're going to make wrong, reactive decisions that could harm our next generation. And that was the end of, of scene one. Scene two, I'm suddenly standing in front of a gas station. It's a convenience store. There's an Indian man, that's a man from India, who was there standing beside me. He was clearly the manager or the owner of the store. And off to the side of the store, he had built a tall chain link fence with barbed wire across the top of it. And there were all kinds of tools, tractors, lawnmowers, all kinds of equipment inside of this fence. And it looked like he had been trading or bartering or something. 
and he was gaining a bunch of tools. Uh, the man clearly is about to be in the rental, tool rental business. He had so many of them. And there were cars parked all over the place getting gas. Well, a, a man pulled up frantically with his family in the car. They were clearly very rushed. They had tied mattresses and items from their homes onto the top of the car. Their a little open trailer in the back was packed full of stuff like they had just thrown it in. The kids were looking outside kind of bewildered, and the man jumped out, ran to this man, opened his billfold, and he said, I need a tank of gas. And he held out some dollars, and the man said, I don't take U.S. dollars. So he said, well, what do you take? And the, and the man said, well, what do you have? They begin to walk over and look into the back of this trailer and rummage through it as if they were going to trade a piece of equipment for a tank of gas so this man could get down the road and head west as fast as possible. Then suddenly, I'm at scene three of this dream where I was in a war room. It was like a situation room that the president or a high official would be in. In the middle of the room was President Bush. He was tired, worn out. He had his hands in the air like he was saying, everyone just get away from me. I'm tired. I don't want to hear anymore. I'm worn out. There were people all around him with clipboards, and they were talking to him, trying to give him advice and direction. And uh, in the room around him were television screens with different events going on around the world. So we were clearly in a very important room. I was standing off to the side, and there was a Secret Service type of person standing beside me wearing sunglasses. And uh, he began to speak to me. He said, Daniel, you see that the president is very tired. And I, I said, yeah, I, I can see he's worn out. He said he's been fighting a long, hard battle. And I responded, yes, I can see that. He said, do you know what his number one enemy is? So I began to think. I, I really had no idea, but so I just threw out the word socialism. He looked at me with a very stern face, and he said very clearly, communism. And then the dream ended. And that was the three-part dream in its entirety. You know, I've heard both of these dreams, and... I think they're of God. I really do. I think that God has shown you another piece of the puzzle of the trouble that America is going through. Daniel 11.35 says all of this is coming, basically, to try. So, unfortunately, some of them, I was understanding the Bible says, will fall to try them and to purge and to make them white. All of this trouble is coming to remove the spots and wrinkles because Christ is coming back for a glorious church, not having a spot or wrinkle or any such thing. Amen? Amen. I believe that. Okay, now, about the dream, and I want to tie some things together. You were shown that property lines were dissolved, the dollar is worthless. Lindsey Williams was told by the ruling elite probably 12 to maybe even two years ago that by the end of 2012, the dollar will be dead, unquote. That's the exact words he was told. You were basically told that the dollar is going to be worthless. This really tells us that this dream may, in fact, be upon us very soon. Dollar worthless, property lines dissolved, panic by all. I was shown a dream back in 2001 that the economy fell and there was panic every place. I've had many people that have been guests through the years that have told me that there is a financial panic coming. You were shown that too. That's correct. And this panic, this one to come, is very hard to navigate through naturally. It's going to require believers to be connected with the Holy Spirit. And as, as his word says, your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. We're going to have to have divine revelation and inspiration in order to navigate through this next panic. And I thank God for the dreams and for the visions that the believers are having in order to help direct us through this situation. Also, the fella was gathering items basically in a barter situation to exchange for his gas. He was letting them have the gas, but they were having to barter things other than dollars. So that's further confirmation the dollar is going to be dead. This could be saying that this could happen, oh, I hate to even say it, maybe even 12 to 18 months away, maybe even by the end of the year. 
Who knows? It certainly could. And I'll tell you what, I, I would not personally wait around for the potential 18 months to five years. I believe that God, when he gives us warnings, and he has given us plenty of warnings, just like Noah. Now, he gave Noah decades to prepare to build an ark, but he only gave Joseph and Mary that night. He said, get up and take the baby now. That's right. So we don't know the time frame on God's warning, but he is, uh, he's speaking to us to move now on this by faith. Okay, Daniel, tell us about your book. I'll tell you what, we put a book together that explains this, both dreams in detail. It's called Warning America, Attempted Hostile Takeover Exposed. And we are exposing this underground action that is taking place right under our noses through this book. And uh, the book just came out in July. It's brand new, and it's getting uh, very good results, and people are becoming armed. Now, one thing about King David and the sons of Issachar, he had a group who knew the times and seasons and what needed to be done. And I am a very strong proponent. I don't want to just know what's coming. I want to know what to do about it. And so we took extra time in this book, and we clearly went through the entire dream, both dreams in their entirety, and then we began to explain what do I do as an American with my money, my retirement plan, what do I do with my family? I say it this way. You need to build an ark to protect your family, your faith, your finances, and your future. And this is not a time to sit back and just wonder. This is a time to move. And if you're not moving now, you are behind the curve. So that's what this book does, is it arms a person on what to do in order to protect themselves from the demise that's coming upon this great nation. Brothers and sisters, if you'd like to have his book, Warning America, call Prophecy Club, 785-266-1112. That's Prophecy Club, 785-266-1112. You can also check online, prophecyclub.com. Now, there's a couple of questions. One of the other things that I noticed about your dream is, in the first one and the second one, both had financial disaster. I know that Lindsey Williams has told, financial disaster is all into our future. You were shown in the second dream that we were actually following Obama into a dark tunnel. I think that that's what we're doing right now with Obamacare. And what you're saying is there's going to be more communism and the nation will follow Obama right into a deep, dark financial tunnel that an earthquake will close the mouth off and we will all die. So what basically what you're saying is financially America is about to die, which is sort of what Lindsey Williams was told. Yes, and while I don't know all the details of how this whole communist play is going to take place, I do know that the U.S. dollar is dead. That is my belief. I absolutely stand by that. Uh, as Lindsey Williams had said, the dollar's dead by the end of 2012. Uh, you just mentioned that. I believe that, but the real America, true America, is very wealthy. You see, that whole dollar system, that is a fiat, fraudulent piece of paper that's been contrived by the hearts of wicked men to control human beings. But true America is very wealthy. When you think of the oil and gas reserves and the things that we have in this great country, it's very wealthy. And I believe that's why the world bankers, the elite, will use this whole communistic piece to try to seize upon the wealth of America. They're famous for going to war against nations that they want their natural resources. And America is sitting on enough oil to feed the whole world for the next 60 years. We literally can replace the Middle East and become a great nation. But these elitists want control and they want to seize the natural resources of this country. Well, all of this is trying to make the entire world come down to one decision, and that is whom do you worship? Will you worship the beast and take his mark? Trust me, the devil is going to put a lot of pressure on a lot of people. And unfortunately, there's going to be a lot of Sunday bench warming Christians that will capitulate, that will take the mark, that will lose their salvation. A lot of people in a time of trouble, they will turn, they will take that mark. And that's the reason we talk about it here on the Prophecy Club. Hopefully, you folks have put down your deep roots into the rock so that when the winds blow 
and when the rains come, your house is not going to be built on sand. Your house is not going to fall. We all need to be prepared with what, the warning of Daniel. And you remember Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego said, Be it known unto thee, O king, our God is capable of protecting us from you. But be it known, we are still not going to fall down and worship your image. We need to all be prepared to give our life rather than to fall down and worship that image because that test, that is coming. We are the last generation. Most of us alive right now will have the opportunity to deny Jesus. Do you believe that, Daniel? I believe that with all my heart. And my friend, I have never been more convinced than this, that at this time in our history, we have people in high offices, in ranking government positions, that are not just deceived, they're not just idiots or fools. These people are flat-out Satan, Luciferian worshipers. And these people use war as blood sacrifice to their little g-god, and they are working as active antichrists in order to try to usher in this next age. And uh, we have to understand that, though it's hard for us as good Christian Americans to comprehend the evil that these people think about while they're sitting around drinking tea and they're planning the demise of nations and the demise of people. We have a hard time fathoming that, but the Word of God is very, very clear. You're either on one side or the other. You're in one kingdom or the other, and this is a clarion call of God for his people to get into his kingdom and get a personal relationship developed with the Lord Jesus Christ. Get that light that you need to live your life and to get into Psalm 91 protection. Psalm 91 doesn't come to us. We go to Psalm 91. And if I could just say this real quickly, in the days of Moses, when Moses was ready to take the children of Israel out of Egypt's clutches, when the plagues began to hit, the Israelites suffered under the first three plagues, probably because they were just worshiping Pharaoh like everyone else was. But when they started realizing God was moving on their behalf, they moved and Israel lived in another land called Goshen. Dr. Daniel Davies, thank you for being on. Thank you so much. Time has run out, but I want to say thank you for listening and thank you for your prayers and your gifts of support. God bless. Now from the Prophecy Club, some exciting opportunities for you. I just made the revised Revelation verse by verse 2.0. The first DVD was me teaching Revelation with my finger in the Bible. The new 2.0 version has 612 PowerPoint slides, 212 pictures, and 10 charts. The topics are, what is the message of the seven churches? Who are the four horsemen? Is Revelation layered or sequential? What is a probable time for the tribulation to begin? Who are the beasts from the sea, the earth, and the pit? What does is fallen is fallen mean? What does it look like the day Jesus returns? Is the day of the Lord a year, a month, or a 24-hour day? Who is the woman who rides the beast? Who is the false prophet? Does the new Jerusalem come down at the end of 6,000 years or 7,000 years? When do we get our mansions? Are there one or two judgments on America? When is the door shut to the five virgins? Does everyone who survives Armageddon automatically get a glorified body? Two-thirds of mankind is killed in the tribulation. What happens to the other one-third? Eight hours, four DVDs, valued at $120. The upgrade gift amount is $30. The full version, $75. Call 785-266-1112. Ask for 2.0. That's Revelation verse by verse, second version. 2.0. Call 785-266-1112 or go to prophecyclub.com. Revelation, verse by verse, 2.0.